Uh, hello, folks. Uh, today we'll speak about the Sahara project, about the Elastic Data Processing feature. It's a technical deep dive into this functionality. And uh, today's speaker are uh, myself, Sergei Lukyanov. I'm the project technical lead of this project, and uh, I'm the principal engineer in Mirantis. The second speaker is Alexander Ignatov. He is from Mirantis too. He's a senior engineer. And the last one is uh, Trevor Mackey. He's from Red Hat. He's a senior engineer. Uh, so our today's agenda is a very brief overview uh, of the Sahara project and uh, overview of the EDP architecture and the technical concepts of this feature. And we will have a live demo today too. Uh, so let's start. Uh, our program is about providing an uh, operator's functionality for creating and provisioning uh, elastic clusters. This elasticity uh, provides uh, the ability for users to utilize different resources in their clouds much better than just uh, having a thousands of nodes for Hadoop on a bare metal for the whole time. So you can just add, remove nodes from the cluster. And the uh, second uh, direction of Sahara is uh, providing operations for Hadoop jobs, for Hadoop workloads, on top of the created provisioned clusters. So what is a Hadoop? Hadoop is a, a big platform. It's not just a single project. It, it's pretty same uh, as OpenStack. It consists of two core projects, HDFS and Yarn, that provides uh, distributed file system and uh, distributed data processing uh, engine. And uh, there are a lot of different services and projects built and working on top of the YARN. Uh, for example, for streaming processing, for batch processing, um, and uh, a lot of other tools. So it's a very, very big and uh, fast-growing platform in big data world. So why do we think that it's a good idea to bring Hadoop to the OpenStack? As you can see, it's a Google Trends chart that shows uh, graphs for the OpenStack, Elast uh, for the Amazon Elastic Cloud, and for the Apache Hadoop. Uh, so as you can see, the Apache Hadoop was started uh, several years earlier than OpenStack, but both products have the same angular of growth. That means that uh, they will grow very good in the future. And that's why we think it's a good idea to bring big data world starting from the Hadoop project to the OpenStack and have a service integrated here. Uh, so let's take a look a bit on the architecture. We have uh, an UI plugin in Horizon that implements all of the functionality provided by the Sahara service. You can do anything the Sakara could do from the UI. It's now in the process of merging uh, of this plugin to the Horizon itself. So I hope we'll have uh, Sakara integration as part of the Horizon release in June. Uh, we're using Keystone for authentication, like all other services, and we're using Heat for providing and provisioning uh, different resources for our Hadoop clusters, like instances, networks, volumes, and etc. Uh, so, a few notes about our current status of Sahara project in the OpenStack. We're an officially integrated project in June release, uh, and we support different uh, Hadoop distros. The main ones are Vanilla Apache Hadoop, it is built by ourselves uh, as a reference implementation of plugins. It's uh, about installing Vanilla Apache Hadoop and some uh, tools on top of it. Uh, the, the second one is uh, built by vendors. It's a Hortonworks data platform. It's a big management platform that installs Hadoop cluster and uh, tons of the different uh, tools on top of it. Uh, additionally, we have Intel distribution of Hadoop plugin that is now closed by the Intel and, and in the process of merging it to the Cloudera distribution that is now in a blueprint and uh, on review uh, some parts of it. Um, additionally, I'm glad to say that uh, we have uh, Sahara included to several OpenStack distros. It's included to the RDO and to the Miratis OpenStack 2. Uh, so this slide is about our contributors. 
as you can see, the first three logos, Mirazis, Cotton Box, and Red Hat, the companies that was started as this project about a year ago in collaboration uh, on a Portland summit. Uh, I'm glad to see a lot of lawyers here and new names and companies who are contributing to our project. So the next speaker is Alexander. He will talk about okay. the EDP. Okay, thank you, Sergei. Uh, hello, I am Alexander uh, from Mirantis, and today I'm going to talk about a little bit about EDP, its architecture and technical concepts. Uh, so, at the high-level point of view, uh, ADP is a key feature of Sahara, which allows users to uh, execute and manage Hadoop uh, jobs on clusters provisioned by Sahara. Uh, today, uh, Sahara EDP supports uh, three types of external data sources. They are Swift, Hadoop Distributed File System, and Ceph. Also, Sahara may work with uh, uh, several kinds of uh, MapReduce uh, jobs, uh, like Java Actions, it's uh, Java programs uh, compiled into the MapReduce instruction, uh, MapReduce itself, uh, Peak scripts, and Hive queries. Uh, who is not familiar uh, with Peak? Apache Peak is a platform for analysis of uh, large data sets, uh, sets uh, which contains uh, high-level language for expressing uh, a data analysis program. And Hive is a tool uh, known in the big data world uh, allow users to uh, expose uh, SQL-like queries over uh, known relational data uh, in the uh, NoSQL storages. Uh, for uh, executing uh, jobs, uh, uh, Sahara uses uh, Uzi. Uh, Uzi service is a workflow schedule system um, which is used to uh, execute and manage Hadoop jobs. Uh, today, Sahara supports uh, both Hadoop versions included in all plugins in the, in, in the Sahara HDP and the Vanilla plugin. And uh, there is one uh, uh, new feature, interesting feature. Uh, it's uh, job executions on the transit or temporary clusters. So why uh, this EDP is needed? Uh, the first use case I'm going to talk about is uh, simplified task executions. Um, Sometimes uh, Hadoop users uh, do not want to know about uh, which cluster uh, is used for uh, his calculations, uh, for calculations over his data, uh, which configurations is used for that, how this cluster was provisioned, uh, which cloud resources used for it. So Sahara can um, uh, work with this uh, use case. Uh, the second one uh, use case is about efficiency of utilizing uh, cloud resources. Uh, sometimes a uh, user uh, needs to um, run resource-intensive uh, MapReduce tasks in a short period of time. And this task could be run uh, nightly, so let's say how ADP could, uh, uh, can run uh, this job uh, at night, and the daytimes uh, cloud resources could be used for another purposes. Uh, as an is, Use case uh, is about something like uh, after scaled uh, clustering. Uh, it could happen that uh, some MapReduce uh, job running on the Hadoop cluster could work faster if we, if we add uh, uh, new calculation resources to it, uh, like uh, data nodes for HDFS layer and task tracker for MapReduce layer. So. Uh, uh, so the, this use case uh, solves this uh, problem and uh, can uh, speed up the calculation uh, doing that. So uh, let's go deeper to the EDP concepts. Uh, and uh, Sahara EDP uh, can work with three types of uh, objects uh, in terms of uh, EDP. The first, uh, there are data sources, job binaries, and job executions. The first one is uh, our data sources. Uh, a data source object uh, represents a user-defined URL for input and output locations in uh, some uh, external storage, like Swift. Um, uh, knowing that each Hadoop cluster running by Sahara always will know uh, where to get the input results and where to store the data. 
the next one are job binaries. Job binaries objects uh, also provides user-defined URL to the uh, programs written by user and uh, which will which will run on the Hadoop clusters. Uh, they could be pig and hive scripts, executable jar files, and pluggable binaries and libraries. Uh, there are two options in Sahara to store uh, binaries in Sahara internal database. Uh, in that case, no extra credentials needed to get these uh, binaries. Uh, and another option is to store uh, job binaries in the Swift. Uh, in that case, user has to provide uh, some additional credentials to get uh, job binaries, uh, job binaries from the container, Swift containers. So uh, let's look how to execute uh, the job uh, step by step. As the first step, uh, user, user already, or, or already has uh, input data uploaded to the external storage. Uh, uh, job binaries he uploaded to the Swift or to Sahara database, and he has to start uh, run the job. Uh, but before that, in the second step, he should run a cluster. It's cluster. It could be already running cluster. It could be new cluster. It could be transient cluster. A transient cluster uh, is a type of cluster which uh, is dedicated to run the Hadoop job for only single Hadoop job, and after that, Sahara will go and kill that cluster. Uh, uh, there is one uh, more restriction that uh, cluster uh, which will run Hadoop jobs uh, in EDP uh, should have uh, Uzi ser must have uh, Uzi, Uzi service. Uzi is a uh, tool which uh, uh, allows Sahara EDP to uh, run uh, the jobs. It communicates with job tracker, uh, push to here, uh, push to it uh, some MapReduce instruction, and so on. So at the next step, user goes to the Sahara NDP, provides uh, all additional uh, configurations, job-specific configurations, like uh, number of map tasks will be used in the map stage during the map reduce calculations, or number of reduced tasks, how, many, how much uh, Java heap size will be used for each task, and so on. Also, user has to provide URLs for uh, job binaries and uh, uh, data sources uh, and extra credentials if, if it is needed. And finally, uh, user has to push the uh, launch uh, job button. Uh, when job uh, execution has started working, uh, Sahara copies all job binaries to the shared uh, location in the HDFS of provisioned cluster, uh, so, uh, so letting the all Hadoop services to get it uh, later during the uh, actual job execution. And the next step, uh, Sahara EDP uh, generates uh, file or script or uh, scenario file uh, to Uzi. Uh, it contains job-specific configuration, uh, URLs to job binaries and uh, data sources, and extra credentials uh, if it has in, the, in that script. So uh, the next step, when the data processing happens, uh, Hadoop services uh, read the input data, do some calculations, and store uh, the results in the provided location. At the same time, uh, Sahara EDP tries to monitor uh, the state of the uh, job executing, job executing, uh, uh, job may, may, may be in the uh, three, uh, three types of states. Uh, firstly, it's in pending state, then in the running state, and then in the uh, succeeded or killed state. Uh, and the final step, when user goes to the uh, data storage and grabs the uh, output results. That's all from my side. I'm passing the ball to Trevor. I, I will switch. Thank you. It's connected there from the, oh, there I am, okay. So we were hooked up from the Lenovo back to a, a stack at Red Hat. I was gonna show you this great stuff, and for some reason, uh, the, the weakest link, the projector, won't pick my machine up. So um, 
I'm going to have to do, uh, do this live, well, somewhat live, from a video. Um, can we go back to the slides first? I had a few introductory slides. Oh, okay, so I apologize for the, the delay. Okay, I, I just am breaking everything. Are, are, are they not there? They're not there, that's the end. <laughs> oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, great, something's going right. All right. So the demo that we have on video is uh, called Big Pet Store. Some of you uh, back from database uh, design days might remember that Pet Store was like a big popular thing to do and you track uh, purchases of you know, transactions of pet supplies. So uh, in the Apache project now there is um, uh, this demo, Big Pet Store. Um, it's meant to be essentially a test laboratory for all things Hadoop. So uh, you can play with it. Um, it tests the Hadoop ecosystem. It generates data, cleans data, processes data. Uh, and the really cool thing about it is it's being actively developed with uh, integration testing. So it's a, a nice um, platform for testing that you can always count on uh, that will be there. I've got the, the Git address up there. You can clone it and build it. Uh, and run it. So we're going to look at that in a minute. So what does the demo do? Um, it generates a million records. It could be much bigger than that, right? Big data is much bigger than a million records, but just for the sake of um, for display, it was set at a million. Um, then we run over it and clean up the CSV a little bit, uh, rearrange it, uh, and then run a query on it to extract uh, cumulative counts of purchases of pet supplies uh, per state. And so it shows you the basic building blocks of how you run jobs in EDP. Um, essentially, there's, uh, there's really only three things uh, beyond the cluster itself. There are job binaries, right? So that's just a pig script or a hive script or a jar file. Then there are jobs which uh, group multiple binaries together into a bundle. Um, and there uh, you can param parameterize those at launch time. And then there are also uh, data sources, which are um, basically objects that represent paths. So uh, for some things like Swift, there will be some kind of authentication mechanism in there. Um, currently, it's uh, password credentials, user password. Uh, we're looking at doing something uh, different in the future um, in the design sessions. But um, all that information that you need to access your data path is encapsulated there. Um, those are the basic building blocks. Um, this is just a, a view, I don't know how well you can see that, of the data that comes out of this thing uh, with a, um, a listing from Hadoop. So you've got the, the block on the top, um, shows you the sort of unclean data, and then it gets processed in the second job and uh, tab separated um, and normalizes some of the date fields and things like that. And then in the third job, it runs a uh, query uh, using pig across all the data and pulls out um, sample, sample by state. And of course, this is just a, uh, you can see that it ends at Arizona. Um, it's actually potentially much longer than that. That's what the data ends up looking like. And I think, uh, yes, okay, so that's our next slide. So if you can switch back to the video, and I'll try to keep track of the time here and um, make sure we have time for questions. Well, I think we're fine. Um, and I may need to pause this at, at certain points too. What's that? Yeah, it should be at three minutes. All right, so um, here we go. So this was, this was uh, previously recorded, recorded, thank goodness. So the first thing we're showing here is the definition of a job binary. Um, you give it a name, in this case, bigpetstore.jar. Uh, you select your file off of disk uh, with a browser and you upload it and hit create. Um, that's all it takes. Now you have a job binary, okay? And so that contains the classes that the big pet store needs to run. So next, we create a job, also very simple form here. We give it a name. 
uh, we select the job type. In this case, it's a Java action, which corresponds to Uzi Java actions. And you select libraries uh, from a dropdown of things you've already uploaded. Now our job is defined. Um, now we can launch, you can launch uh, on a transient cluster or on an existing cluster. This is the existing case. Um, for Java actions, of course, you need the, um, the main class, what are you gonna run? And then you pass arguments to it. So in this case, uh, the first argument is a million records. And the second argument is a relative HDFS path. So it's going to generate this data under the Hadoop user on the cluster. Um, and then we launch it. Um, it'll sit there and be pending for a while. Uh, when it turns to running, it means Uzi has pick, picked it up and started to execute it. And um, I'm not sure. On a, okay, so here we go. This is the Uzi console. Do you want to pause just for a second? Because I think it's going to outpace me. Um, thank you. So uh, one of the nice things about Sahara is we have links to a bunch of the web UIs for different tools um, exposed through Sahara. And the Uzi link is one of those things. Um, and it's very helpful for checking the status of your job runs or debugging things when they go wrong, finding out why you know, a job didn't work. Um, so if you go under the cluster details, you can pull up the, uh, the URL for the Uzi console. And that's what this is here. Um, and in there, you can examine the workflow that was generated. You can look at the Uzi logs. Uh, we also have links to you know, the various uh, MapReduce UIs, um, and that's all available uh, from the cluster page. So, okay, go ahead. All right, so we're just looking at uh, a few logs here. And eventually, this will go to succeeded and say that it's finished. There we go. So now we have our data. And I believe that this now is going to, OK. Uh, it's doing a, a listing of the data on the node to prove that it's actually there. And then the next job will be uh, the job that does a combined um, clean and analyze. So one of the nice things about Java actions is they're completely free form. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can pass anything as arguments. Um, some of the other job types are more constrained, like for instance, a traditional MapReduce job. It, uh, there aren't so many parameters you can give to it, and it demands that you uh, pass an input and an output object. Um, so here we're just reusing the same jar we had um, for the, oh, actually. Okay. All right, so this is, uh, this job is, um, it's a, would you hit pause again? All right, sorry, I'm just trying to get my bearings there. Um, this job is a, a Java action that actually runs uh, pig um, as a second step. It uses the pig APIs to run it directly. And so this has a pig script uh, and the uh, big pet store jars lumped into it. So it'll execute the, um, the Java portion first, which generates the clean data, and then it will use the pig API to, um, execute a query on that, and it will pull out the final result, which I believe we will see in a, uh, a nice little web display, uh, color-coded map of the US when we're done. Um, so again, and the Java actions are very flexible. You can run uh, anything you want. Some of the example jobs are things like uh, estimating the value of pi, um, pretty much whatever you want to do. Um, here, we're adding libraries. Um, some of the job types uh, will have a main script. Some will have um, supporting libraries when you have multiple things bundled. And we should go sit through the same process here. Launch on the existing cluster. Um, specify the, uh, the class you're going to run and the values. Um, in this case, it's just an input and output path uh, because it's going to run on the generated data uh, and then clean it. 
Let's see, how are we doing for time? Okay, we're still good. Um, Actually, so while that's finishing up, I, there are a few other things I wanted to note. Um, this example, uh, the big pet store stuff, will be in the Sahara repos really soon, so you can run it yourself. Um, we have a, a repo called Sahara Extra, and that's where the examples go. Um, we also have a CLI, which does all of the stuff you can do through the web UI. Uh, I've actually written uh, an integration test against the CLI. I use it to launch clusters all the time. Um, it's great. It's very easy to use. Just take some JSON inputs. Um, and so we should have more examples coming your way. Let's see. Let's see if we get... There's our display. So that's our processed output with the result of the query. And uh, we should be pasting it here. There we go. And that's our color-coded map. So this is your executive summary when you have to talk about how many pet, pet supplies you sold. Uh, you can impress people with a flashy graph. Um, and it all came out of Hadoop on Sahara. So that's it for the uh, demo. Um, I can show you the live one out on the picnic table if any of you want to see it. <laughs> um, can we switch back to the slides? I have a couple of slides left. So what do we do next? Um, I believe uh, EDP was, was new in uh, Havana, um, and we've developed it pretty rapidly, um, and, and we like it very much, but there's still a lot of things that uh, we'd like to do. And so here are some potential areas uh, for further development. Uh, other job models beside Uzi. Uh, right now, we're, we're locked down. Everything is expressed as an Uzi workflow, um, but it doesn't ultimately have to be that way. That's just where we started. Um, so we'd like to make the, the job system pluggable so you could run other stuff, you could run custom stuff, um, and then the current Uzi offerings would become just one option. Um, I know we, we've talked a little bit about a Spark plugin, other things like that. That would be, you know, even a, a, a bigger divergence from Hadoop. But ultimately, we would like to, um, you know, be able to run all different kinds of workflows with different uh, engines. Um, in Uzi itself, there are some things we'd like to add. One is uh, user uploadable Uzi workflows. Um, Uzi can do an awful lot. And uh, sometimes those things are not always easy to express through a web UI. Uh, so if we let you uh, design your own workflows and upload them, then uh, there are no constraints. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, and uh, going along with that, we'd like coordinated jobs, uh, you know, directed acyclic graphs, um, input, you know, output from one is input to another, that kind of thing. Um, one thing that's uh, we're very uh, what I want to say passionate about is, is usability. Um, we would love your feedback if you have a chance to play with it. We want better error reporting. Um, nothing is worse than when a job fails and it just says failed or killed and it doesn't tell you why. Um, somebody knows why, right? Some layer of software knows why. It knows enough to say killed. Uh, how about tell the user what happened? So um, we're... Uh, Looking, looking into that to make that a better experience. And then just the user experience uh, in general. We want this to be something that people just love to use, um, that they think of as very easy. I have some big data processing job I want to run. I'm going to go use Sahara uh, because it makes my life simple. Um, so we are on pound openstack-sahara on Freenode. We're there all the time. Uh, please stop there, ask questions. Um, some friendly person will answer you. Uh, we have an OpenStack dev uh, mail list, which is pretty active. Uh, just OpenStack-dev Sahara in brackets in the subject, uh, and you'll find us. Um, and I think... Is it... It doesn't want to advance. Was there, was there, that might have been the end. I, I, oh, there we go. Uh, so we have um, design sessions uh, in 304, um, Thursday and Friday. We're going to be talking about some of these things, uh, how to make this more usable, how to make it consumable, um, how to make it pluggable, uh, all that kind of stuff, Thursday and Friday. So if you have any interest at all in that, um, go ahead and, and drop by. And uh, if we have time, oh. Great, we have eight minutes for questions. So um, if you'd like to ask questions, then 
one of us will answer whoever <laughs> seems most appropriate. Um, So I have a few questions. The first one is, uh, are you supporting just non-MapReduce type workloads as well on Sahara? Is there a roadmap intention? So I'm looking at streaming, uh, stuff like Cloudera, Impala, or uh, some of the newer uh, processing paradigms that have been made available with Yarn on Gen 2. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's only MapReduce. Uh, because we're, we're still relatively young in the project. But uh, with a move to um, Hadoop 2, uh, and you noted Yarn, you know, Yarn can ex execute anything. So uh, there's a big field for us to expand there. So at, at present, it's only MapReduce. Uh, but we would like that to be more than that in the future. Got it. Second question is, uh, through Sahara, can I provision a Hadoop infrastructure end-to-end, -end, uh, including the name node and the job tracker, or is it, does it attach to an existing uh, you know, infrastructure? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can launch Hadoop clusters straight from Sahara. In fact, that was uh, part of what I was going to show you uh, live uh, if I had time. Essentially, you define uh, node group templates, so uh, usually you have um, one or two master templates, depending on how you want to break down your master components. Then you'll have some worker templates. Um, and you define those and then group those into a cluster template, which gives uh, the number of each uh, type of template. And then you just launch. And then once you have the cluster template, you can hit launch all day, assuming your, your uh, data center can handle it. And um, it's very, very easy to uh, create clusters that way. Got it. Thank you. Uh, final question is performance. Have you guys benchmarked, or are you looking at benchmarking Hadoop on uh, OpenStack versus bare metal and uh, you know, non-virtualized? Uh, yes, we have a, a talk about it. It's probably the session tomorrow. You can go to it. It's named uh, something like uh, Hadoop performance on OpenStack. It'll be tomorrow. OK, got it. Great presentation, guys. Thank you. So it looks like we're out of time. So. Maybe there are no questions. more questions. Uh, you can always uh, find us on a Mirantis booth, uh, probably on Design Summit. Uh, you can attend and uh, uh, take a look on a live demo. This guy and this guy could, <laughs> could show you. OK, thank you all. Thank you all.